The Media Dialogues, Vision 2020. One step forward, two, maybe four steps back. Emerging from the nationwide lockdown is turning out to be an excruciating and frustrating process. This week, the Union Home Ministry extended the lockdown up to the end of July. In Maharashtra, Mission Begin Again has ended up creating a gridlock, quite literally. Today on the Media Dialogues, the spotlight is on the hospitality sector and as you know, the route in is always via the story of a great brand. So, please welcome Puneet Chatwal, the Managing Director and CEO of Indian Hotels that runs 200 hotels across the world, including the iconic Taj Chain. Close to 34,000 people work across six brands. The revenues last year were close to 4,600 crore rupees. Just half of those hotels are open today. The company has been at the drawing board figuring out ways to generate revenues even as it waits for the country to open up. Puni, thank you very much for joining us. I know how difficult it has been. Thank you for making time. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Anubhaldo. We are recording this on the day that the Mumbai police is investigating terrorist threats or the threats of an attack on two of your Mumbai Taj properties. Uh, what can you tell us about that and how are you coping with this challenge on top of everything else that's going on? Well, I think um, a part of the answer lies in your opening statement. If you are India's strongest brand, then uh, you know you are the kind of target or you are the spot uh, that gets all the attention. And um, having gone through 26, 11, almost 12 years ago, yes. uh, and the aftermath of it, it's not easy. We take all these threats uh, very seriously and the safety and security, both of our customers as well as of our associates is of paramount importance. Uh, so we, are, we have done what is necessary. And, uh, you know, we have the, uh, the horrible event of uh, 2008 behind us. So, we know approximately what needs to be done, although you never know because, uh, you know, terrorists have their own ways of finding new, uh, new tactics and new means to disturb. Uh, but we are prepared uh, to deal with any kind of attack or, or threat on our brand, on our hotels, on our company, or better said, even on our nation. Puneet, you know that you've got the good wishes of, uh, you know, everybody watching and the country with you uh, on this. Uh, tell us what, you know, what are the people in these hotels? Because I'm going to pull out from that into the current scenario, which is a lockdown scenario. And the fact that 100 out of your 200 hotels have are open today, uh, hosting a combination of regular guests, repatriation guests, essential service workers and frontline health workers? There are very few hotels that are open to regular customers. Uh, mostly for the last, um, you know, 70, 80 days, we've been hosting essential services uh, within the essential services, mainly the medical staff, uh, especially in Mumbai, uh, from all the, all the BMC hospitals. Uh, so we are on an average uh, been hosting almost more than 1000 medical staff on a daily basis. And of course, uh, the people who need quarantine uh, coming on the Vande Bharat flights and, and very little business because hotels are officially shut. Yes. They're shut in the national capital of Delhi and they're also shut in the commercial capital of Mumbai. Uh, we opened up in Bangalore on the 8th of June. So there is uh, some business in, in Bangalore as well as, uh, you know, within driving distance of Bangalore. Uh, some also in some other uh, states, uh, especially in the Northeast. All in all, you know, it's the business is really limited to essential services and repatriation flights, or you can say the majority of the business is uh, coming from these two sources. This is the end of June, which is the end of the first three months of the new financial year or the current financial year. And it is, uh, you know, the first three months of the full impact of the COVID-19 lockdown that we've implemented. Um, what can you tell us about the kind of revenues that you've managed to generate in this time, given that scenario that you've just described to us? It's not just the hotel industry the aviation industry, the tourism industry, uh, a lot of industries uh, have suffered uh, a lot and not just in the first quarter, the suffering started 
uh, somewhere in the middle of February, started accelerating around the 10th of March yes. and came to a complete standstill as of, I would say, 20th, 22nd of March. 22nd of March was the Janta curfew and 24th, the official lockdown. Having said that, I, I do feel that every crisis brings its own sets of opportunities, a time to reset, a time to rethink, a time to re-strategize. And uh, I think we have been working on that. So, so the 100 days have not been a waste. But uh, yes, from a revenue perspective, uh, a deep a negative trend, but from an intellectual perspective, a deep upward trend. Okay, let's talk about the positives at this point. Give us a sense of what kind of new things that you've come up with. I'm sure that, you know, top leadership at the Indian hotels, uh, you know, all your teams down the line have been in huddles trying to figure out how to navigate the reality that is today and even the reality in the short term and perhaps the medium term if once the na nationwide lockdown opens. Yeah, I think let me take a step back and say first, First and foremost, um, we had to press a button on, you know, our touchness uh, re-strengthen. And when I say touchness re-strengthen, we really talk about the new safety and health protocol that is needed. And we were confronted with it, maybe the first, and have been in it for 100 days because we are, you know, in many of our hotels, we are uh, directly exposed to the medical staff that is working with the COVID patients. Yes. So, uh, so I think the first and foremost was to come up uh, with comprehensive um, safety and security management strategies uh, to be implemented immediately, uh, which others would be doing when the lockdown uh, ends. But we have been in it for almost, as I said, 100 days, Absolutely. also hosting our staff. So it was very important to have social distancing for the staff members also, and they were not allowed to go home. So uh, a lot of our hotels in Mumbai are also, uh, you know, the temporary homes of our associates who are serving uh, the guests. So that's the first thing that we did. The second is, I think we worked upon what we call a reset. Uh, we were way down, you know, like 60% of the way into our aspiration 2022 journey. Yes. And we had outlined a lot of themes and we achieved almost 70, 80% of it. And I said, okay, now is the time to uh, re-strategize. We defined reset as new revenue initiatives. So there are seven or eight of those which we'll be launching uh, as and when the lockdown uh, is over, a couple of them have been launched. There are five more to follow. This is a time to rethink all the costs, to be a bit more frugal than we have ever be have been ever before. It's right. not cost cutting. It's not cutting into the bones. Rather, you know, uh, cutting the unnecessary, which we don't have sometimes time to look into because everything is moving upwards and moving very fast. Uh, then, obviously, very effective asset management you know, sweating your assets better, renegotiating contracts. A lot of times you have to stand up and help your uh, other partners and owners because 40% yes. of our portfolio is third party owners. Yes. And they are not able to meet their expenses. So what do you do? And last not least is being, you know, thrift or exercising financial prudence. You know, we saw you announce something called Cumin, completely different, you know, an app-based um, uh, restaurant uh, delivery service from the iconic restaurants at the Taj. Is that one of the things that we can see, uh, uh, could be, that we can consider as a new um, revenue generate re generator going forward? Human is very exciting because we did not want to go down the route like everybody else does using a third party uh, service to uh, do the home deliveries. We said we will do it ourselves and we will develop our own app then use an existing platform. So we started the delivery service a few days ago. The app should be going live on 25th of July. And we will be also opening human gourmet shops for takeaways yes. um, in, uh, in, in August, towards end of August. Uh, in Mumbai so, Puneet, this the is president. not a stopgap. This is not a stopgap temporary way to get your, uh, you know, uh, well-known kitchens on, in these well-known restaurants going. This is something that you see as a revenue stream that is here to stay. 
Uh, absolutely, you should not do as a very large group, you should not touch something which doesn't have the potential to add or be at least 20% of your current EBITDA level. Sure. So uh, the ultimate objective is in three years time to get to the current uh, EBITDA level of 20% and to make this as a separate business vertical, wow. uh, which could also function as a standalone. And, and you're saying that this idea has resulted from this challenge that COVID has posed. Am I fair in interpreting it like that? Uh, actually, that's absolutely true. I think wow. uh, okay. had there been no COVID, I don't think we would have thought of this mm. uh, because there was no need. You know, if your sure. restaurants are full, uh, if you have a waiting on every weekend to enter into Wasabi in Taj Mahal Palace Tower or in Mingyang in Lansend or House of Ming in Delhi, you don't start thinking of doing home deliveries. And now there is this whole issue of fear that set in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it was a good time to launch. There was always a need, uh, but it was maybe not a need that was being satisfied by hotels in our positioning sure. uh, or brands in our positioning. Yes. And I think, uh, as I say, you know, this necessity is the mother of invention. invention yes. And so we also went into this. What else can you share? So one which we have launched already in the state of Karnataka is, uh, and eventually in whole of India, will be a 4D experience. And the 4D stand here for, you know, you dream, you get into your car and drive, you discover a new destination and you delight yourself. So I think that's our 4D initiative. And there are another five as a listed company. I would not like to give that information right away now, but just hold your breath for another four weeks. And uh, because the lockdown is delayed, uh, some of these announcements will be delayed sure. because there's no point launching initiatives when hotels are shut. The 4D seem to suggest that you see people taking family, driving holidays, you know, so four hours, five hours, six hours distance from where you are, perhaps an overnight driving trip. What are you seeing in terms of the way people will behave in the holiday space going forward? Anuradha, there are a few things here to... To, to be aware of. One is as we are what we call during COVID or in the midst of COVID. The second is a post COVID and the third is a post vaccine. Yes. I think post vaccine things will go back to pre COVID level and the behavior will go back to pre COVID level. But during and post, you know, the, the, the peaking of COVID, post right. of that, there will be. Uh, a lot of fear still around people and uh, you know people would be very careful people will wear masks or, or doing whatever is needed and one of that is also not going into a lot of crowded places yes. so if you take a holiday from bangalore to a place called kurk hmm. or you go to chikmaklu yes. or you go to some of those coffee plantations uh, under our new brand called ama yes the, uh, the, the stays and of, trails yeah the, yes, the stays and trips. So they provide an ideal family holiday. So you're away from home, mm. but you're not in a crowded place. Mm. And you're in like, you know, those stays and trails and bungalows. And a and lot of our properties, we are very blessed mm. uh, that we have offer those kind of villas and those kind of accommodation. All these properties are just ideal for those kind of holidays, family holidays and people going away, but also for... Um, a lot of board meetings, or I would call it, you know, uh, management and team building meetings. Actually, as we speak, we are hosting one of those in one of our homestays and trails. What about business travel? Business travel, which uh, everybody, all the, you know, uh, corporate leaders that we've been talking to seem to come up with one big headline about this lockdown experience, which is that, hey, we were traveling way more than we ever had to. How do you see that impacting, uh, you know, business travel and therefore business stay? This is also a typical human behavior. You know, in hindsight, we are always smarter. And at the same time, memories are short. Mm. So we have had this discussion <laughs> since the uh, early 90s, you know. Yeah. Uh, when people said, because now we have video conferencing, people will not travel. Because mm. now we have 9-11 and planes are used as... Uh, as weapons mm. so nobody will get into the plane and mm. it's also true i mean i at that time i was working for an american company and yes. i had to go to the american head office every five weeks 
or four weeks and the planes were empty. Mm. And that went on for six, eight, nine months. And later the business travel picked up as if nothing had ever happened. Mm. Uh, same thing happened when we were cutting cost in the aftermath of, you know, the, especially in the Western world, uh, in the aftermath of Lehman crisis or the, or the, the financial crisis. Yes. Uh, and a lot of people were not traveling. There was an attack, as you said, terror attack in Mumbai on, on a few prominent hotels, including one of ours. That doesn't mean people stop going to hotels. So, so as I say, yes, we are both, we are smarter in hindsight, but also memories, human memory is very short. Man is a social animal, you know, you like to enjoy. And when you enjoy, there are very few who don't like to be seen. Mostly you go to a hotel or other places, public places, because you like to see and you like to be seen. Right. And unless there is a complete change in human behavior, mm. um, which is very difficult uh, to, to imagine, then I think uh, a lot of this will come back, whether it comes back in 12 months, 16 months, or 20 months, that we can debate, but eventually it will come back. So it's good to hear that optimism, 12 months, 16 months, 20 months, where are you putting your money if you were to be a betting man? I think it's six months. Six months? So, yeah, I think things will start coming back faster than we believe. The only challenge is, I say, six months post lockdown. So if the lockdown would have ended on 30th of June in yeah. India, then you would see by end of December, things will come up, uh, you know, Christmas, New Year or post New mm. Year. Mm. And if it is now July, then maybe it is as of Jan. But already as of October, you will start seeing um, far more activity than you see today. Okay. So, Puneet, you mentioned the lockdown and the extension uh, up to July 31st. Uh, how are you reacting to this? While nobody is undermining the seriousness of the fact that cases continue to come up, that people, uh, you know, that people are falling seriously sick and we need to manage how we are dealing with COVID-19, do you feel that the extension of the lockdown, whether it is uh, nationwide or whether it is Maharashtra's reaction or some other states, do you think that now there is a sense of uh, a little bit of policy paralysis and perhaps fear psychosis? I think this fear psychosis is more critical than anything else. I think the same media needs to be used to... Uh, you know, instead of just taking one case out of 100 and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not suggesting TV, I'm saying social media, uh, tweet, tweets that go around. Uh, yes, COVID is very contagious. It tends to spread very fast. However, and having said that, um, you know, the fatality rate is much, much lower than anything else that we've seen of this kind of a serious nature. So, I think we need to just educate more people because just extending lockdown is not going to change anything. Mm. On the 1st of August, again, people will go out and again, they will be a spread. So how long do you want to have people locked down inside? Uh, and, and I think the businesses and the financial situation uh, in the country is uh, under a, a very strong threat. And whether we open it slowly or we open it, you know, step by step, we need some form of opening up. And at the same time, a lot of education of people in terms of do's and don'ts, and if need be also regulated do's and don'ts, uh, so that it is checked. You talked about the opportunity that has come up because of what is going on or the experience we are undergoing at this point of time for your uh, AMA uh, stays and trails. You talked about the kind of uh, properties that some of the Taj hotels are in, which would be ideal for people who want to get away but want to stay safe and without coming into contact with too many people. What about Ginger Hotels, which is actually the chain which offers you, uh, you know, a, 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 at the other end of the spectrum for business travelers. And for, um, how do you think that will be affected? Well, Ginger has had a very exciting uh, last 18 months. It has been positioned in what we call a lean luxury instead of being, you know, cheap and budget. Uh, it's becoming, you know, taking a turn towards more lifestyle at that end of the market. Uh, it's very much uh, liked by uh, by the new generations. Uh, 
Mm. And uh, at the moment, when we look at occupancy levels, is uh, Ginger is leading versus all the other brands, but also because uh, some of the locations uh, do tend to benefit yes. um, more. And the smaller towns, yes. The smaller towns. So, so Ginger is benefiting there, and uh, some of the Ginger hotels are actually operating at almost 80% occupancy. Mm. Whether they are hosting medical staff or they are hosting, you know, repatriation flights, uh, but they are uh, operating at a very high level of occupancy. Uh, but there are many that are not allowed to be open, so the average comes down. But those which are open are doing quite well. Right, and in and I actually see that this is a brand to watch. It has a potential to get to 500 to 1,000 hotels in India mm. uh, over the next 10 to 15 years, and mm. it's currently only at 50. Hmm. So this this brand can grow very fast. Um, unfortunately, we have not been that lucky in growing this brand, but the last 18 months have been very good for us and I see no reason uh, in anything changing with Ginger going forward. Let's get your reaction into what support has come in by way of um, the government in terms of all those financial packages we've seen that have come in over a period of time. Is there anything that is directly helpful to uh, the hospitality sector, given that you have the example of what, let's say, uh, you know, the, the, the government in UK has done or what has been done in the US that has come in handy for a company like yours? I'm very optimistic uh, that something will come. I think the need for the government first was to also provide safety and security. But the sector for the government, for the country is too important as it not only creates a lot of jobs, but it creates a lot of indirect jobs. So we are hoping that something uh, will be announced uh, shortly once the opening up starts or the, once the lockdown begins to end uh, to kickstart this sector. And uh, yes, other governments have done, they have other needs and wants, they have other social systems. Of course. You know, it's of it's course. much easier if in, if in Germany or in Switzerland or in Belgium, you almost get 80, 90% of your last drawn salary as a, as a help uh, from the government if you became unemployed and yes. then they give you uh, 10, 20% more to make it 100. That's a very, you know, a very different story versus what it would have meant here. So. So I think some help is needed. And in my other role as the president of the Hotel Association of India, yes. we've been working very closely with the government and uh, uh, we have made a lot of suggestions. My only thing when I go on the media, I say, and I will use this medium also to, uh, to reinforce a point that the time has come that, uh, that the hotel industry is not just called industry, it is given the status of industry by the state governments and a status of infrastructure at the central level and that uh, that hotel, tourism, etc., yes. is included in the concurrent list of the constitution. Final question, your aim was to open more than one hotel every month in FY 2020-21. Obviously, that is not happening. Uh, you took over in this current role less than three years ago. You'll do three years in November. Uh, what, how were, did anything in your experience prepare you for this kind of challenge, the kind of challenge that COVID-19 has put forward before all of us as individuals and especially on people like you who occupy that corner office? So, Anuradha, I have to disappoint you. We opened 13 hotels last year. And I am quite sure as and when the lockdown ends, we will continue on the journey of openings. Uh, it's a very important part of our growth. So having opened more than a hotel a month, so we are just short of two if we looked at the last uh, 15 months to come to that number. And I think we can uh, turn around that very quickly uh, going forward because we have a pipeline of 40 plus hotels that are either close to opening or uh, shall open in a period of, uh, you know, a right. substantial number of those will open uh, in the next 16 to 18 months time. Second part of your question, uh, had I thought of something like this, um, I think 
neither I thought something like this could happen because it never happened in my lifetime. Of course, yes. Nor did any business school that I attended <laughs> taught us what to do when your revenues almost drop to zero or, you know, like or drop by 90%. Uh, how do you deal uh, with the financial metrics? So, so that has been a good learning in the last 100 days on what to do and what not to do and what we will do going forward and creating our own you know kind of a playbook of excellence the third thing that has definitely been very interesting in the last uh, almost three years uh, or let's say two years and eight months that i complete today is um, a combination of st strategy and agility is needed uh, which i call str uh, stragility right. and stragility is a key to success going forward uh, just having strategy and not having the right agility will be not enough because it's not the big who will beat the small, uh, it's the fast who will beat the slow. Doing the right things uh, is very critical. So, so leading with, I would call, humanity, uh, responding to the change, uh, rather becoming an agent of change and mm. leading the change rather mm. than victim of change, and leading with unity and collectively. Puneet, thank you for joining us. I wish you, your entire team, the Ta Taj family, the Indian hotels family, across all those different hotel brands that you have in your portfolio, a lot of good luck. Uh, we hope that we will all be able to meet each other, see each other, and have conversations like this face-to-face -face pretty soon. Thank you very much for joining us. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Look forward to it because if we meet face to face, you will encourage business travel and we need it. So yeah. we need you to come. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Puni. Thank you. Thank and thank you, you very thank much you. for watching. We'll be back again with a conversation like this very soon. So do look out for us. And in the meantime, stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. The Media Dialogues. Vision 2020.